Since 1958, it's been a union, unique and unmatched in football. The merging of family and club, embodied by the two men as father and son, together but separate as champions of their own respective generations. Serge Silvani was nine years into a 239 game career when his first and only son was born. And it wasn't long before Stephen's desire emerged to follow in his father's footsteps. My dream was to play AFL footy, or VFL footy when it was in. It's really all I really wanted to do as a kid. I'd come home from school and I'd kick the ball out on the road and it didn't help me to kick well, but, <laughs> but yeah, I always wanted just to have a footy in my hand and do that type of thing. So um, obviously that was sort of wake up and Serge always told me, you know, like footy's not going to be there, like what, what happens if you, can't, you don't make it or, you know, that type of stuff, you know, it's tough and he always played a low played it very low key. He played tackers football, which is, he was about an eight year old. And uh, it was the first game, and you could just see that he could read where the ball was going. Most kids just chase the, the ball in a big pack, and he'd just sit off it, and then just come through and read it. And they wanted to say, oh gee, this kid can play, uh, we'll put him up in the under 10s. And I said, nah. He'll just play his tackers, and then he'll play his age group when he's old enough. Courtesy of Serge's playing and coaching, Stephen was immersed in football's culture earlier than most, with some of the game's greats as his first teachers. Serge was always a, a great friend and, and a mentor of mine. Uh, Serge is 10 years older, but we played together in grand finals and shared a lot of great times, so there was always the, the strength of that relationship. And I can remember Stephen as just a kid um, coming down for Sunday training, and Serge would bring him along, and you'd see him grow up through the stages there. So on the Sunday mornings, I used to sit in on the players dissecting each other's performance on the Sunday morning, which was absolutely ruthless. And if you know the culture of the club at Carlton and, and the way and the acid tongue of a McClure, Mackay, Buckley, and those guys, they used to carve each other's performance up if there was a glitch or, or a weakness or a mistake. And he's picked that up. I mean, you could imagine kid being eight, nine, ten years of age and you know you're, you're walking around again alongside you know, Alex Jezelenko and Bruce Stool and Mark McClure, Wayne Johnson and Lee and I barracked for Carlton so you know every time like after a game now like, you know you sit down and you, you get getting unchanged and whatever and these little kids walk in the room and uh, you know they're looking at you know the plays, the cooters and these type of things and you know I cast mine back my mind back you know, 20 years ago basically and I was there all the time how fortunate I was that I was able to you know mix it with some of those great players. Screws it back towards the goal square here's Stephen Silvani picks it up slides it through another goal to Marcellin there's 6-1 37 assumption 3-2-20 there's young Stephen Silvani son of the Carlton veteran surge he carried the lessons of the early years through to his time at Marcelin College, playing school football against the likes of Gary Lyon, Gavin Brown and Bill Brown. Off the ground. Silvani with a good hand pass. Here's another goal, perhaps. Setting it up. Gavin Brown, his third, and Marcelin moves further ahead. 17-5. There was actually a time where I really grew. I must that was you know, probably at the age of 13, 14, and I really became uncoordinated. And um, just remember, like, I'd be running along and I'd be kicking the inside of my ankle, like pigeon toed, and, and it was just really frustrating to not be able to do things when your mind's telling you to do stuff. And uh, I'd just gone through a massive growth spurt, 
and I'd really dropped off. Like, I was terrible. <laughs> Times I'd missed the ball and whatever. So, you know, that was a worry. I'd like to congratulate Assumption on the, you know, they fought it out to the end. And their coach Stephen almost had to grow into his body to get used to it. Whatever happened, it was only a matter of time before the Blues beckoned. And for the comparisons with his father to begin. Silvani wins a keenly contested mark to stem a dangerous thrust and puts the Blues into an attacking when position. When I arrived at Carlton, I just considered myself as any other young guy st you know, starting out. And I think I was fortunate that it only sort of took me six reserves games before I made senior footy. So, and then I played the remaining 13, 14 games, whatever it was that season. So I probably established myself fairly quickly, which made it a lot easier. So that pressure of having to, you know, carry the name or being Serge's son wasn't there. Oh, that's a oh, shocking kick. kick. Oh, that is bad play by Zantuck. An easy mark taken by Steve Silvani, the ex-Marcelin College schoolboy. I think being the son of, uh, of a Carlton, an AFL legend, it'd be enormous pressure in initially, but it's a, a testament to Serge and, and to, to Soss himself, um, just the way that you know, he's just evolved and it's got to a stage now where he's just an outright champion of his own ilk. Um, and both of them are and, uh, and that's how they're looked upon. To have a father that's played senior footy and um, played quite a bit of footy and you know, be reasonably successful at it, um, for him to be able to give me the guidance along the way that uh, and obviously, you know, fathers probably know their sons better than anyone, and he knows when I'm <laughs> probably not going 100% or I'm not doing things right, or I should do something a bit different to have that guidance. And it's not as if he, a lot, it's not as if he basically um, told me what to do. He, there were suggestions that uh, you know maybe I, I should be doing something a bit differently or whatever. And it's just uh, to have that influence uh, as a youngster particularly, I think was, um, it was a real benefit for me to be able to sort of push on and go, and go the distance of playing so many games in, 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 uh, at Carlton. As fate would have it, the number one worn by his father was available to be handed down. A new chapter in the Silvani story had commenced. Yeah, I can remember receiving my first jumper. Oh, they have a dinner, so I think the Tuesday before the uh, first game. So, um, and I got received. I was given the uh, number one jumper, which was, you know, huge, real, because all the kids I was starting out with were getting number 52, 55, and 60, <laughs> and he always given number one. So, <laughs> you know, it was, uh, it was probably a bit of a joke at the table at the time, you know. But uh, yeah, listen, I was fortunate to be given a number. By 1985, and despite his young age, Stephen's chances of being picked for the seniors were becoming stronger. But Serge was on the selection committee under David Parkin at the time. So I was a bit apprehensive, apprehensive of him starting as a 17 year old. You know, I, I just wasn't too keen. I just wanted to sort of, just been out of, come out of school. I just wanted to be mature a bit, physically even, and you know, uh, be an 18 or 19 year old before he started seeing it. Bradley back into the breeze. Somebody! Stephen finally convinced his father that he should go over the line and, uh, and, he, and he looked from the first moment a natural for, for the game and uh, has gone on to become, I think, one of the, the great um, people. Um, if you want role models for sport and Australian football needs them like any other sport. I kept away from him as much as I could. You'd never see me in the rooms in a game having a chat to him. I'd always do it through a third person if I had something to say to him. So it'd be a Stephen Goff or a Cole Kinnear and later on a Rod Ashman if I had something to say to him. I'd like, hey, why don't you try this, why don't you try that. It'd always be through a third person. I'd never be there in front of people laying the law down or telling him to do things. Serge wasn't alone in his initial apprehension. I always thought, you know, I was worrying him getting hurt or worrying playing well. And so I was more worried on that side of things, but, you know, you just sort of ex 
you were proud in the, at the same time that he was sort of trying to achieve Here something. Collins gives it on to Bakanaru, hooks it over the shoulder. Good play by Silvani, a lovely mark. She's seen most of my games and uh, a hell of a lot of Serge's games. She loves her footy. She thinks she's an expert and uh, we'll let her think that. <laughs> Like Sometimes your heart is in your mouth. So, so, oh, why does he do that for? You know, you sort of worry about it, but that, that's his guy. And you can't. Sometimes I say to him, what did you have to do that for? Especially when, now that he's getting a bit older. So he's not young anymore. But, you know, that's the way he plays. The female family influence was hard for both Serge and his son to escape. Three sisters and also my mother, so that's four girls that they Serge and I had to put up with over the years and probably it even got worse when we ended up getting the dog and it was female as well. The year after his debut, a former club champion returned to coach. Steve was just a skinny teenager. I'd seen him develop and grow as a kid because